Look at this skin, a regular Katowice 2014 craft, right? Wrong. This is way more exclusive than that. Let me show you something. This is a regular Iba powered Katowice 2014 paper. Very plain. Here we have the same sticker, but with a holo effect applied to it. Very iconic, right? Now, I've bet you've never seen this before. Once again, same sticker, but with the foil version of it. As you can see, it has sort of a metallic look combined with a 3D effect to it. At this point, you may ask yourself, why have I never heard of them before? And why can't I buy them? Well, since there is no price data for these items, you can't basically purchase them. It is virtually impossible. Let me take you on a ride, and let's start from the very beginning. In 2014, there was this now well-known CSGO event called the EMS1 Katowice 2014 Major, and it happened to be a pretty big deal for the overall development of not only the CSGO game, but also the CSGO skins market. You see, with the event, Valve introduced Team Sticker Capsules for the first time in the history of the game. And let me tell you, these were not really appreciated by the community in the beginning. I mean, no one really bought them or thought too much about them. To be specific, Valve added Legends and Challengers Capsules. The Legends Capsules contain the top 8 teams that participated in the first ever CSGO Major, Dreamhack 2013. On the other hand, the Challenger Capsules contain the top 6 best placed teams from the close qualifier and 2 extra teams that were invited. Okay, 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 let's just stop here for a second. What does all of that have to do with the cattle foils you mentioned earlier? Well, let me explain it to you. Not only did we get team stickers, but we also got souvenir packages. And this is where Katowice 2014 foils were actually born. We all know that nowadays, souvenir packages are map specific. They exclusively contain gold stickers. Two of those are reserved for the team that played the match, one is reserved for the map the match was played on, and lastly another sticker is for the event organizer. However, Kato 2014 souvenirs were a lot different and a bit more special. The way they used to work is a lot different. Back then, they only contained three stickers. Two for the teams that played the match, and one for the event stage, which would either be the group stage or the playoffs. The thing that makes them really stand out is the fact that the team stickers are not gold, like they are today, but foils. Do you see where I'm going with this? The combination of foil film with Katowice's stickers is really, really rare, overall forgotten and really unique. It is the first and only souvenir package with that characteristic, and if you look at today's market, we can only estimate how much these unique pieces can be worth. Not to mention, it is also the first time we see Valve introducing an attempt at a gold sticker. Another key difference is the fact that only one souvenir package was released, instead of dividing it between maps, as we tend to see nowadays. That technically means that the single souvenir package contained skins from six different collections. Those collections were Italy, Lake, Safe House, Dust 2, Mirage and Train. So the tournament was played the 13th of March 2014 and ended three days later. So yeah, you only had three days to get lucky and receive a drop because, well, that was the only way to truly obtain them. Furthermore, the event distributed the teams in four groups of four. The two teams in each group, with the best results, would advance to the playoff stage. Talking about the different event stages, it is important to mention that matches played in the group stage would receive the Wolf Gold Foil sticker, and the ones played in the playoffs would receive the School Gold Foil sticker. Going right back to the playoffs, these are actually your typical playoffs and exactly what you would expect from them. All the matches were best of three in an elimination bracket, and we got to enjoy quarterfinals, semifinals and finals. The winner of the event was the well-known esports organization Virtus Pro, and the MVP was the legendary Pasha Biceps. Now, into the juicy part of it all, the team pairing. But first of all, why does team pairing matter? You see, do you remember we said that souvenirs could only drop during matches to the viewers? 
Well, the stickers contained in those drops were exactly the ones of the team's encounter at the time. Meaning, if you were watching I Buy Power vs Dignitas and you were lucky enough to get a drop, your souvenir would contain exactly those stickers. Plus, obviously, the appropriate event stage sticker we talked about before. In this particular case, alongside the team stickers, you would also receive the wall stickers since it was a group stage match. That is why team pairing actually matters, so yeah. Depending on the matches played during the event, you could get different combos. Unfortunately, not that many matches were played, which makes for quite limited combos. And yes, sadly, Titan and I by Power never played against each other because, well, they were in different groups during the group stage and unfortunately, none of them advanced through the playoff stage, so no fire and ice craft exists. Okay, let's pause for a second now and let me ask you a question. What would be your preferred combo? You can definitely let me know in the comment section and who knows, maybe it even exists? Let's go find out! So here we have Group A. The teams within the Group A were Virtus Pro, Hellraisers, Titan and Mouse Esports. So technically speaking, there should be a combination of all the team stickers within the group, right? Actually, that is not how it works. You see, the matches within the group had different purposes. The first match was the opening match, which was completely random. After that, the winner's match was played, which obviously was between the two teams that won the opening encounter. The teams that would win again would immediately advance into the playoff stage. Next up, the elimination match would be played, which, as the name says, the team that would lose again would be out of the event. Lastly, we have the decider match, which was played between the loser of the winner's match and the winner of the elimination match. The winner of this match would advance, and the loser would be eliminated from the tournament. With that said, you should understand that even though there are four teams in a group, not every team played against each other. As an example, Virtus never played against Mouse because, well, Virtus went 2 0 and Mouse 0 2. That means that there are no Katowice 2014 souvenir weapons with stickers that contain Virtus and Mouse in the same gun. Now, moving into the second group, or Group B, we have Ninjas in Pajamas, Team LDLC, 3D Max, and Vox Eminor. Here you have a picture of all the matches played in the group and let me make sure you understand how the combinations work. Question for you. Which of the following combinations cannot exist as a souvenir Kato 2014 foil craft? Is it A. Ninjas in Pyjamas and Vox Eminor? Is it B. Team LDLC and 3D Max? C. Team LDLC and Vox Eminor? Or D. Ninjas in Pyjamas and 3D Max? If you guessed A, you were right. Congratulations! Team Dignitas, Fnatic, Reason Gaming and the iconic I by Power were all in Group C. And here are the matchups, which if you pay close attention to, you'd see that unfortunately Reason Gaming and I by Power never played against each other. You should know by now what that means. Lastly, in Group D, we have Complexity, Mystic, LGB and Navi. Navi and LGB never faced each other. Okay, so now we're done with the group stage. Let's quickly visit the playoffs. Here you have a screenshot of all the matchups that occurred. As we've mentioned before, Virtus Pro ended up beating Ninjas in Pyjamas 2-0 in the grand final. In total, 20 games were played during the group stage and 17 during the playoffs or elimination stage. But let's go right back to what truly matters. Skins and stickers. In total, there are 126 Souvenir Katowice 2014 packages in existence right now, of which 86 contain various Pro stickers, which is logical, since they are the team that played the most amount of matches. It is quite surprising to see that the vast majority of that supply is being owned by two relatively well-known CS2 skins individuals. For those who don't know, that means that they can basically sell you the packages at pretty much whatever price they choose to do so, since no one can really undercut them. The owners are MVP Has and Susano, so if you want to potentially buy a package, you now know who to ask. But let's dive deep and dissect the packages with a bit more depth. The most supplied package of them all is unsurprisingly the grand final package, of which 49 of them still exist. 
that obviously makes sense, as it is the match with the most amount of concurrent viewers, since it's obviously the finals, so it's also the match in which the most amount of packages ever dropped. During that encounter, and keep in mind it was 2014, the GoTV and Twitch stream reached a number of 252,888 concurrent viewers, which at the time was pretty impressive. It was obviously between Ninjas in Pyjamas and Virtus Pro. Contrary to that, the least supplied package is actually a tie between a few of them, but the more interesting ones include Vox and 3D Max, Reason and Fnatic, Titan Virtus Pro, and Team LDLC and Vox. And I am sure you're missing one, right? Where are the iBuyPower packages? Well, luckily for us, three still exist. The infamous souvenir iBuyPower and Fnatic package, but I am sure these are nowhere close to being cheap. As a matter of fact, it is currently available on Buff163 for about $15,000. So if you have about 15k laying around, you can go ahead and purchase it. And finally, here is the rest of the entire supply for the legendary souvenir Katowice 2014 packages. Okay, stickers are cool and all, but on what skins were they actually applied and why? In order to understand that, we need to consider the collections that were active at the time of the event. In total, there were six collections in the souvenir package. Dust 2, Italy, Lake, Mirage, Safe House and Train. And actually, that is quite an interesting choice by Valve. Keep in mind that the active map pool at the time did not contain Italy, Safe House and Lake. Instead, Inferno and Noob were played at the event. Nonetheless, they still decided to add them into the souvenir package, which is in my opinion, quite interesting. The total amount of souvenir skins with Katowice 2014 foils is estimated to be around 28,880 zakes, out of which 23,219 are grey in rarity. That actually represents a little bit over 80% of the total supply of the skins. Moving on to light blue, there are around 4,494 currently in existence, which represents around 15.5% of the supply. Next up, for the blue rarity skins, we have a total of 984, which is about 3.5% of the supply. And lastly, for our purples, only 189 exist, which is actually less than 1% of the supply. Let me show you what I believe are the best and most iconic ones. And obviously, let's kick things off with an all-time favorite, the P250 Sand Dune. As you can see, we have a Titan with a Hellraiser's best position Sand Dune. Furthermore, this dropped during the Decider match, which makes the skin a little bit more spicy. Next up, M4A4 Urban DD Pad with a Team LDLC and Virtus Pro. Beautiful. This commemorates the quarterfinals match between Virtus Pro and Team LDLC. For the AK, I have chosen this one right here Vox vs. Team LDLC, where Team LDLC ended up winning against Vox during the opening match for 16 to 13. Look at this next craft UMP Blaze with a Titan and Hellraiser's foil. It dropped actually during the same decider match as with the P250 Sand Dune mentioned before. Lastly, we have the iconic M4A1S Nitro. All stickers are in the best position, and the LGB with the fanatic foil fits perfectly. This one dropped during the quarterfinals where LGB ended up beating Fnatic 2-1 in the best of three. Did you know that four out of the five skins I just mentioned can no longer be unboxed and do you know why? If you thought that that was all for the Katowice 2014 foils, you're wrong. There is still a lot more to discover. If you didn't know, Valve decided to remake some of the maps in the original pool of collections for the Katowice 2014 souvenir package. With that said, they didn't only just remake the maps, but the collections alongside with it. The maps that were affected include Dust 2, Mirage and Train. That means that the original collection was no longer obtainable in any way. So, to clarify it once again, some of the skins became all of a sudden completely unable to be unboxed anymore. So yeah, there are some cattle foil skins a lot rarer than others. 
Going right back to the souvenir packages themselves, there is one more package I have purposely avoided mentioning until now, and it is truly legendary and one of a kind. I am talking about the Valve pre-event souvenir package. And although there isn't a whole lot of information about this package out there, from what I could find, it is estimated that only 50 to 60 packages ever dropped. This package only dropped during a match between the Valve Squad Alpha and Valve Squad Bravo. These teams were entirely composed of the Valve development team. Basically, what Valve wanted to do with this package was test whether the souvenir drop system they designed was working as intended. And let me tell you, it was a success. To this day, it is unclear whether that match was played in the map Militia or Inferno. Browsing old forums, I could find some CSGO players advocating for the match taking place in Militia, while others supported the idea of it having been played in Inferno. Ultimately, you can believe whatever makes more sense to you. What's also special about these packages is the fact that instead of containing team stickers of the teams involved, it instead only contained a gold ESL wolf or a gold ESL school sticker. At the time of this video being recorded, there is only one pre-event stage package in existence. And in terms of pricing, I could not find any reliable information. But I guess I can use this opportunity to ask yourself, what do you think the last remaining package is worth? How much would you pay for it? Does it even mean anything to you? You can definitely let me know down below. Now, all of this information is interesting, but I'm sure you want to know the prices of Katowice 2014 foils in today's market. And unfortunately, there is not a black and white answer to that. There are actually several factors that heavily influence the price of Katowice 2014 foil skins. Factors such as the team stickers, the position, the skin it happened to be applied on, the wear value, and obviously the rarity. But let me show you some examples. Here is a field tested P90 Scorch with a Virtus Pro and Ninjas in Pyjamas foil, none of the two in the best position. How much would you pay for it? Well, for the guy selling the skin, it is worth around 40 bucks, which would be more on the cheap side of the Katowice 2014 foil skin spectrum. Moving into a bit of a more expensive Kato foil craft, we have a Mac 10 Candy Apple with a Mouse Esports and Titan foil, currently up for sale for about $2,500. Yeah, huge price difference compared to the previous skin. And that is how the market actually works. As mentioned before, team stickers applied and skin rarity play a big role in terms of price in the actual skin. Lastly, look at this M4A4 Urban DD pad that goes for about $7,000. It has a Dignitas foil in the best position and a Ninjas in Pyjamas, sadly not in a good position. I think these three skins pretty much cover most of the price spectrum for Katowice foils. You have cheaper skins, such as the P90 mentioned before, and more exclusive ones such as the Urban DD Pad with better stickers. Obviously, there are more than likely more expensive ones, but they're not currently up for sale. And who knows, they might never be. At the end of the day, they are pretty exclusive and desired collector items. Keep in mind that supply for these skins can only decrease, which is a big factor as well for the pricing. Congratulations, you now know everything there is to the infamous Katowice 2014 foil stickers. Hopefully, this video has served its purpose, which is to open you up to a new potential market you might have otherwise never known of. The art of collecting souvenir skins, more specifically Katowice foils, is slowly but surely being lost. If you end up deciding to buy one, you have the option to join a very private and secretive Steam group specifically reserved for Katowice souvenir owners. There, you can discuss, trade and share your passion for these quite unique skins, with obviously legendary stickers. This video took hours hours of research, script writing and editing. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and I see you in the comments section. Thanks for watching.